Hello, and welcome to this lesson on how to conduct descriptive data analysis using Microsoft Excel. Excel is very powerful application software that can do many tasks. Among those tasks, one is to analyze quantitative data. Thus, in this lesson, I will explain how to analyze the descriptive statistics such as mean, mode, median, kurtosis, skewness, range, standard deviation, and so on as you see in this list using Microsoft Excel. Thus, stay with me till the end of my discussion. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the notification button to get future updates. Thank you. In the beginning, you have to make sure that, in your Excel ribbon, which is found in the upper top part of the worksheet, as you see, under Data tab, you have to check the existence of data analysis tool. If it exists, no need to add it again. If it there is no data analysis tool under the data tab, you have to add it first. To do this, or to add the data analysis tool in our data tab, we have to follow the following steps. First, open the Microsoft Excel application and select the empty blank workbook. And then, go to the File tab. Then scroll down to Options and click Options and click on Add-ins from Excel Options dialog box. Once you have clicked on the Add-ins, we will have multiple selections. Here, look at the bottom where you read Manage Excel Add-ins. From Add-ins Toolbox, click on Go button. In the Add-ins dialog box, you can see there are multiple checkboxes such as Analysis Toolpack, Analysis Toolpack VBA, Euro Currency Tools, Solver Add-in, among those checkboxes, select or tick the box named as Analysis Toolpack. Then after, click OK. And now, you can check whether the Analysis Toolpack exists or not by seeing under Data tab. I hope, you can get the Data Analysis Tool on the Excel ribbon inside the Data tab. If we cannot get the Data Analysis Tool, thus, we have to shut down Excel and restart it so that it can refresh and it can appear when you open the Excel again. This task is done for one time only. Once it is installed, it will be there every time we open Microsoft Excel. I mean no need to add it every time we open the Excel. Now, we can open the Data Analysis tool from the Data tab to run descriptive statistics. So let us take one example to show the steps how to analyze descriptive statistics. The example that I took for this discussion is just the score of 20 for students out of 100%. Thus, to understand the nature or the pattern of the score, we have to find out or analyze the descriptive statistics such as mean, mode, median, kurtosis, skewness, range, standard deviation, and so on. To find out the descriptive analysis, Go to the Data Analysis tool and click it. The dialog box comes up with multiple choices of analysis tools. So, you can scroll down and you can see all the possible choices. But, in this lesson, we want to do only descriptive analysis. Thus, click on Descriptive Statistics and then click OK. Now, we have the Descriptive Statistics dialog box. As you see here, we do have the Input Range box. Thus, we have two alternative ways to do. The first is, type the first data which is found in the first row in our case B2 cell. As you see here, and after putting colon separator, we have to write the last data that is B25, which is the last data in our example, and it is found in the last row in the input range box. The second option is, put the pointer in the heading of our data, and now press shift plus down key, down, till the end of our data, and it will automatically highlight all the data, or select all the data. Now we can see, B2, the first data, and B25, the last data, as the input range. Once we finish the input range, as you see our data is presented in column, so column is selected by default. If our data is presented in a row, the row will be selected by default. If not, we can correct it as per our presented data, which means selecting either column or row accordingly. Then, we can proceed to select the labels in the first row. We select this, 
if and only if our first row has label or name of our data. Since, in our example, we do have the label or the title which is called score which is found in the first row of our data, we have to select the labels in the first row, so that our output will be labeled or named with this name, as you will see it later. If we don't have label or title, we can skip to select the labels in the first row, but in this case, the first data will be revealed a title for our descriptive analysis result. So, it is better to have meaningful title or label. Following this, the next step is to decide the place where our output or the result of our data analysis will be presented or revealed. For doing this, we do have several options to place or present our outputs or results of our data analysis. The first alternative may be to use the same sheet with our original data. As you see, this can be done by specifying the single cell in the output range box. The second option can be presenting our output or results in a separate new sheet. And this can be done by selecting new worksheet ply. While we are selecting the new worksheet ply, we also require to give a name to the new worksheet by writing what we want in the new worksheet ply box. The third option is to choose new workbook and click on the new workbook. This will enter the descriptive statistics results in an entirely new Excel file, which means our output will be presented in a new workbook. After specifying where our output will be presented, we have to select the summary statistics so that all the descriptive statistics results will be found. Besides, if we want to specify the value of the confidence level for the mean, rather than using the default value which is 95%, we can select the confidence level for mean box, and we can write the value that we want in the confidence level for mean box. Finally, as you see the default case largest is the first largest data value or the maximum value among our data, and the case default case smallest is the first smallest or minimum value among all the value of our data. Moreover, as per our requirement, we can also specify the second largest, and now we have the second largest number will be displayed, the third largest, the fourth largest, and so on. The same is true for the case smallest value. We can set as we want. For example, we can find the second smallest value from our data, and now we have the second smallest number will be displayed. Or, we can find the third smallest value from our data. Or, we can find the fourth smallest value from our data. As we see the results of the descriptive analysis in the output table, the arithmetic mean which is the mathematical average equals 76.29. The standard error is 2.02. Median which is the positional average is 79. Mode is 80. Standard deviation equals 9.92, and so on as you see in the output table. Lastly, let me give you one important tip. After getting the data analysis result, if you want to modify our source or input data, so run the data analysis again. By using the following steps, click the data analysis and select descriptive statistics, and click OK till you get the updated results based on the modified data. As you see, Excel can do it much faster than doing the analysis manually. Indeed, there are some other methods, such as using formulas or pivot tables which can bring the same results. However, such methods require some more efforts than the data analysis using Excel method that we have discussed now. This is all about for today. Once again, I'll want to remind you to subscribe my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this lesson, please hit the like button, give me your comments, and share to your friends. Thank you.